Now these are the pastel pencils that I prefer to use. They're made by Faber-Castell and each one has got a number on the end. Ideally though, this is a set to buy. This is the Colin Bradley special set. And the reason it's popular because it's got all the 24 colours in there do all my starter pack ranges and all the demonstrations I'm going to be doing in this DVD could be done with this one. I'm going to show you the paper. Now the paper is sand coloured 160 gram on grey paper. A few more things. First of all the uh, double ended eraser. Now this is a must and it's got a soft rubber one end and a hard rubber on the other. You'll see me using that a lot. Another thing you'll see me using a lot is this one which is the colour shaper. This has got a little rubber tip on it and it's ideal for smoothing down and blending in. Okay now on top of that we then use the 186 that goes on top of the ochre but in this centre area rather like this marking here I wanted to make it solid and we want to make it a looking like that with black there we are, like that and the, uh, the brown on top so there's the 186 here's the brown because the pencils are translucent you can't put them light over you can't put light over dark very easily you'll see me do it from time to time darken it down just under the eye lid there and what you get is a great glassy eye look. Now you can use the pastel pencils as blenders and this is what I'm doing now. I'm just going back in with the... Now just before we go into the darker colours I'm just going to put some ochre. Now this is going in, this is 184, slightly different ochre to the one that I used on the pussy. That was 183. But this goes from there and you then develop just now what I want to do is I want to bring just a little bit of that colour into the ochre and white. The next colour I'm going to put in and I can do this at this angle so you can see it is the 176. This is the one I used on the cat as well. Quite solid you see you don't want to leave it with colours underneath showing through, it wouldn't work. Now, going this way around, I had to turn this way to go. And then I go, same thing again, twist the pencil. Now this is quite difficult, so you'll find that you'll need quite a lot of practice, but the twisting of the pencil is the key to it. This is one of my favourite pictures. Um, it's a laying dog and again it's another starter pack of ours and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the nose here okay and this is where we can use the, the paper blender very very carefully just ever so lightly blend it in okay but how much more do we want to do well not a great deal what we want to do is to obviously this is in shadow but we want to use the black because we've got all those undercolours underneath and we lightly blended it, we can now develop, and there is, I'll show you, I wasn't going to show you, but I am going to show you, there's a little cut on, a little, I'm not sure it's a cut, it's just a little intrigue, a bit on the nose like that. So I'm going to put it in. Now here we, we're going to be just putting the dog's mouth in. And what we need to do is to bring just a little bit of brown in down here. Very happy with that. Very simple nose and but very effective. The next subject we're going to be dealing with is, is the chimpanzee. Now he's a handsome fellow isn't he? But what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be showing you this little section here. Now we've got that we need to bring the white back again in those areas that are very bright. So that goes in there like that. And just here, we've got like a, a bit of design going on there. What I'm doing is I'm using the white to create 
a little lip area. You'll see what I mean when I when I finish this now. You can use the white again just to blend it, <coughs> just to finally put a little seal on this. I'm just going to put in the very, very darkest part of that ear. I'm just going to put a little more depth. But you can see how that actually works already. I, I, I'm not pressing terribly hard because the colour itself is doing the job for me. But as I come down, you see I'm moving the, the, the board around. Well, the reason I'm doing that is, whoops, Daisy, you nearly lost it altogether then, is because the, the, the hair comes around and down like that. Right, just to finish this off now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of black on top. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to bring this down too solidly because it will we'll have a problem when we get to there. So what I'm doing now is just bringing it in. It won't matter if you overrun because you can always go back in with a white after over the top and do um, in fact I'll do that to show you. I'll do it deliberately go over the top of it and then you can see how you can bring it back. Now I've showed you a cat's eye, now I'm going to show you a very different kind of eye on this owl. We're just going to do a small section of it, but I'm going to do, as you can see here from this illustration, the second half. So you'll be able to directly compare it with the, the area on the left. Now just down this edge here, I'm going to put in the separation. Now it's a, the light's coming from this direction, so what we're looking for here is for it to hit this sort of centre spine, it's not a spine, but I'll call it that for the moment, in, in the animal. Now here again, you see, I'm being very tentative with this, I'm not pressing too hard, well you can't tell the pressure of that, but take my word for it, I'm, I'm not pressing too hard. So, because, it, I mean, I want it darker than that, so the danger is I press hard to make it darker and that will crush the paper. Now what I'm doing now, I remember there's only three colours, or four if you include the eye, but only three colours put on there, and already I've got it as dark as that, you see? So it's, I've achieved what I wanted, that's great. What I do is I use the grey pencil and just go over it. You see how it diffuses, like that? Okay, then what you can do is put just a little more white in the centre. Now you put the white back on by bringing sharp, a nice sharp white and put it in the centre. I'm just going to turn this round because it's easier, as you know before I've showed you, to, to actually push away from it. So let me show you this, this section in the middle. I want this area in the middle to be lighter. So what I do, and look at me bent, twins, twisting the pencil round as I go. Now this is another of my starter packs. Probably a little diff more difficult than the others that I've showed you. Now it won't react like the other example I've just given you because we've got a white base there. Now at the moment you see I'm avoiding the strong white that I put in there. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to go back in with the pink now. This time I'm going to put just a little more strength in. You see what I mean? Look what we're going around that little eye that I've just done. Imagine trying to get the finger around there. And so you can use a color, uh, paper blender on this as well, but the color shaper would be the preferred one. But I'll also bring it up. And again, Greg, you see how it fades in either side. Okay, now that's the next color we're going to use would be an ochre. And this is only six colours again doing this particular picture. I'm going to use the, the 176 and there we are. Just one other small point while we're here. Um, hair looks like a wig. Do you know what I mean? The only the thing that stops it looking like a wig is if you put a bit of shading on the skin and there we are. Now when you've when you've done all of that and spent a great deal more time than I've just done on that, you end up with something like that. 
Now I told you that I'd show you how I sharpen my pencils. Now I use a blade and I need this for the next picture. I need a nice long white. Now I don't necessarily need a sharp white for this next operation. Okay, so that is my point that I'm going to need for the next one. You'll see when I when I show you what I'm doing. Why? But I shall need a sharper point than that. So I've got another white here. So let me take you now down to the next thing. Because I need two whites <coughs> on the go, especially when I'm filming. Uh, I need this gonna, gonna need this to be sharper. And this is how I do it. You turn it round so you get needle sharp point at the end. Okay, now I probably don't need it quite as sharp as that, but it's the idea is to show off and show you how good this can be. So there we are. Now that's the white that I'm actually going to use when I start off this next, but I shall use that uh, for detail. Uh, and any detail that I need. So that's how to sharpen pencil a blade, a standing knife, scalpels and so on, rather than a pencil sharpener. This is another very popular starter plaque, Boats in Landscape. It has a lot of detail in it. And I'm going to show you um, how I do the sky, uh, clouds and sky, uh, and distant hill and water. There we are, nice guy. You can't see any paper showing through. Now what you do now is we put some sky on. Now what I'm going to do is put a few fluffy clouds on. So what we do is draw them. Like that. Don't have to be too fussy. Like that. Like this. And like that. Now this is the clever bit. What you do is with your finger, you rub it in. Now you see that I'm using these round circular movements, a bit like I did with the pencil in previous dems. I think now those clouds look good, don't they? But why, what you can do is if you've got one of these, which is a double-ended eraser, you can then make, maybe put a, few, I'll put a couple of little clouds here. Now, the reason I'm rubbing it out with that is because it loses the blue underneath. So when I want to put the white back in again, it registers, can you see that? much more solid like that does. Well, we do, haven't made it quite solid and I don't want to. You see this the high, whole idea of this is to is to make it look as though there's something there. Do you see what I mean? You can kind of imagine can't you that there's and then you can put just a little touch of blue on just a touch. Remember you could say well couldn't you use other colours? You can use other colours folks but the thing is, um, we've only got six pencils in here, and I've, and I've included a green, and I've included a, 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 a brown and a dark black, so you see, a dark black, a black, because I needed it for other parts, so it's six pencils, so we, we're only using really the two pencils here, but even then, how effective is that? Now, by way of a complete change in both style and colours, this is going to be a sunset picture, which again is a starter pack, and I'm going to do a section of it um, in rather miniature form, but I'm going to show you how we can develop the clouds and the wonderful effects that we have. First of all, I start off with a little white in there on the sky. Now I'm going to keep this really simple for you. I'm not going to make anything any too, di too difficult, <clears throat> so I hope it's not too difficult. But you can see how that's all marrying together, like that there, okay? And that's quite pretty, isn't it? Now here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just kind of very gently push those in with the color shaper, or you can use the paper blender, and you can just put just touches of yellow in there as well. And I think that looks stunning. And you can still see, see little tiny little holes I'm sure of the pastel paper shining through there. That's, uh, now the next colour is the black. I haven't used the black yet on this picture but it does give the extra 
little bite that's necessary, pushing this land mass against the sky. Uh, now at the moment it doesn't look right, but what you do in fact is come back with the 192 again. And this acts like the blender. The reflections of the land mass in there, not too much, just enough. You can see that quite clearly now, how that's working. And that can go in there. And then right at the bottom where that light is a bit stronger, so we can just whoops. How much I've dug there and put a little bit of light in there so it's reflecting the light from the, the lighthouse. And on this corner, a little bit as well. There we are. Now we can just make it make it look good, make it look. There's not many mediums you can use in quite the same way as this. Right, I'm going to finish off the demonstration on this DVD with the, probably the most difficult of all the subjects, and that is trees. Right, but whilst the tree a little more now, now I'm going to put some ochre in it. That's what we don't want to do is to end up with a, an all green tree. There's always a lot of other colours. See, once again, although I'm using this round twiddly action, I'm kind of like pressing a little harder now so that we get a little bit more register. You see that? There we are now. That's almost finished. I say almost finished because there's one or two little things you can do. I think you'll agree that it looks pretty good as it is. But if you use a lighter green pencil and you do a few little twiddly marks, I just watch down here, we do that. I hope that shows up on the screen. I'm, I'm pointing at one of the reasons that you can't see it everywhere because I'm probably obscuring it. Um, but you can just then use little bits of the, it's a sharp point. And I think I'm going to call that tree a day. But you see how bushy it is. And this is because what well, you saw the build up and you can replay it again. Now there's some trees which I've just completed um, showing you how far you can take this if you want to. But that's much more complicated than I showed you before. The idea of showing you this demonstration is to show you how we can use the pastel pencils for buildings. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do is make sure that I've got definition there and I'm going to put just a little bit of colour on this edge because this is the darker edge of the building. I don't know, so with the roof tile. You see? stands away you can see it clearly. Now this is the final demonstration I'm going to give you but it's probably one of the most impressive in as much as it's working on very fine detail. You can see from the point of the pencil how small this is. Pink on there, now that looks superb doesn't it? Now what we need now is to just make this a little bit more obvious so I should say I was going to put the white but I needed a sharp one, 175, just to put the outline in. We'll be careful with this, we don't want to do too much. And that's a little too much, so what we do then is we use our 182 and we bring it in like that. And there we are. Now that's an example of what you can do. And this is my finger now, so you can see it's quite small. Well, there we are. There's the finished picture. I thought I'd just finish that a little bit off for you to show you how it all looks. And that's that's what can be achieved, but it'll take you a little time. Practice, 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 and sharp pencils, and all the right materials, and you're home and dry.